Hi, I'm Adam Juniper, the sort of nerd who writes books about drones. So, um, just going to take a quick look today um, at very specifically which of the Mavics is the right one to buy. Um, because DJI have finally released the Mavic Air 2, which kind of completes the line. They all have a very, very clear matching style now. There's the light grey Mavic Mini. The new Mavic Air 2, sort of medium grey, and the big Mavic 2, uh, available in zoom or pro, depending on whether you want a big image sensor or a zoom image sensor, uh, which is, as you can see, a slightly darker grey. It's also the biggest and heaviest of the group. Now, we can all look at the spec sheets, but really it's about which is the right one of these for you. And, obviously, there is a pricing element. The um, the Mavic Mini is the most modestly priced. Um, have to spend three four hundred dollars, uh, depending on what you're going battery wise. But you're getting the better part of half an hour in the air with this aircraft. In, in practice, you're going to fly it for twenty minutes or so before you want to come in and, and land, which is usually more than enough time to spend concentrating on what a drone's doing. People often forget that they don't want to necessarily be flying all that time straight because you need to keep an eye on the thing. It's you know there's a certain level of responsibility necessary. Um, now the downsides of the mini are arguably resolution. The video it records is a 2.7K maximum resolution, 30 frames a second. Um, but that isn't that much of a problem. For one thing, it uses a uh, you know less data uh, it's still at least good enough for your phone screen and more than good enough for the limits of Instagram so and it does produce some nice automated Instagram ready effects and there's a 12 megapixel camera so for your average user this is great it's you know more than a toy but because it weighs one gram less than the limit for a toy, it's also not going to involve any annoying paperwork. It's the sort of thing that's you know you can take with you on a trip. It's not going to be too much of a problem, and it comes with a decent controller as well. Um, you can clip your phone in. It seems to have, it has adequate, if not perfect, range. But then you don't want to be flying this too far from yourself, and as so long as you don't take it out in a moderate or above breeze which I've done and which is terrifying because as that weight is an advantage in regulation terms it is not an advantage in terms of surviving breezes um, and this is a great great aircraft really good value better than well you can spend similar money on things with very crappy cameras and this is not a bad camera at all do not be too over excited by the the 4k obsession that has come along into that market because what you really want is a good image and you hear you've got a good image it scales up to 4k and you wouldn't notice you weren't looking at 4k on a, a decent 4k tv so there is your family choice your first drone or possibly your first proper drone you might have got a toy drone but you want to spend a reasonable amount of money on something you know you're not going to use all the time and you know you're not going to use in bad weather then this is definitely the one as a sort of hobby photographer that kind of thing the new Mavic Air 2 the, the Mavic Air was a sort of higher end verging on prosumer certainly the sort of person who spend a bit more on a camera was thinking about the quality the sort of person who buys the higher-end GoPro, if you like, um, and that is this. This is the best Mavic for action because it can capture 4K at 60 frames a second. Um, it can capture 4K 30 frames a second with HDR mode, and it can capture up to 240 frames a second slow mo as standard HD. It has a wealth of subject tracking modes. Almost too many to mention, but the point is it can follow and it can do a really good job of following an object from 
a reasonable distance and because it has collision sensors slash tracking sensors at the front the vision system and the back and the bottom you know those are more for landing these and these give it 20 meters of ability to see things and not hit them um, which you can do to avoid an obstacle in flight making piloting relatively easy to learn and it can do to track an obstacle, you know, or track a subject in, in an exciting way. There are some fantastic shots that I would not be brave enough to try when I'm uh, testing somebody else's drone for a few weeks. Nonetheless, um, sorry, this is now, in many ways, the best choice in the range. It comes in at under $800, so it's, you know, prosumer territory. It's a drone that you're going to use a bit. The battery life is theoretically 34 minutes, continuous flight in practice, a shade under 30 minutes which is, as I said, a long time to be up, but if you're trying to get shots, if you're trying to create good content, that sort of time is more practical and more useful. Um, fantastic half-inch uh, image sensor, up to 48 megapixels using the quad bayer, 12 megapixels using the traditional system, um, stunning panoramas. This is a great aircraft. It, I'm just going to open it up. It's also big. It's a little bit heavier. Still, you know, once you've bought this aircraft, you're going to have to get a regis register it. So it doesn't matter the weight that much particularly. It's 570 grams. Um, so not difficult to carry around. And unlike its predecessor, a spectacular set, uh, 10 kilometer range. Um, different style of remote from the other Mavics. Your cam uh, phone clips in here to provide a screen. Got all the usual controls. Provides a nice, tidy, safe area to keep the control, the connector lead in. And to be honest, feels better than than its brother and sister. But this is the newer. Then the theoretical top of the line is, is the Mavic 2. Uh, actually, this is the Mavic 2 Zoom. Um, the Mavic 2 Pro has the larger image sensor. Something of a choice has to be made. Um, although, financially, the Mavic 2 Pro is the pricier, so it must be the top of the line. Can it be a Mavic and be professional, or is it a really good prosumer? There's debate to be had there. I would say this is the professional one. It's certainly the only one that uses the DJI Go 4 app now, whereas the other two are now both using the Consumer Fly app. Um, I prefer that piece of software, but it's a very marginal thing. It's essentially the same software with a slightly different skin. So that extra weight doesn't affect you category-wise. It's not much bigger, actually. slightly fiddlier design on the case designer. So anyway, we have our vision system sensors here and here. There is also a collision avoidance on the top and sides. Um, although these side sensors, they're sin single sensors, so you can't do much more than see something coming and stop um, when it's orbiting using one of the automated modes. You get either zoom or you get the larger image sensor which have certain photographic advantages although the, the advantages of the, the Mavic 2 are not as good as you might or as significant as you might think because the Mavic Air 2 has the newer software and because DJI's um, demosaicing and various camera software is so good um, that you may actually find for a lot of circumstances there's, there's little in it um, plus the Mavic Air 2 is the only one capable of 60 frames per second at 4K. Filmmakers, some filmmakers are going to find that they want zoom because it allows you to get closer to a subject and have the background appear further away. Um, now there's a fun little dolly zoom effect in the quick shots for the Mavic 2 zoom, but it's also a worthwhile effect it creates a different style um, so 
there is an argument that for some people this is a better aircraft and certainly originally the appeal of the Inspire with its changeable lenses um, allowing you to put a zoom lens on was, was its main appeal it certainly wasn't the size and weight and price so the Mavic 2 zoom is in, in some ways my favourite but if I was buying a drone especially if I was buying my first drone or especially if I was a little braver about getting closer to my subjects then this feels like the better choice at the moment if you're patient and you know you'll have more money in the bank when the time comes you can wait to see what a Mavic 3 might look like there is a rumour of such a thing arriving before the end of 2020 um, and certainly the existence of the Mavic Air 2 asks a lot of questions of the Mavic 2 line at the moment which in many respects is, is behind it. I think I've shown my working but I'm going to try and do it again quickly. Should you buy the Mavic Mini? Yes, there's a place for the Mavic Mini. It's a great first drone or first proper drone. Maybe you've got one of those toys that looks like a little flying minion and you think it'd be great to have a camera. 12 megapixel camera gives you 2.7k video which is more than good enough for most purposes it's you know think of it as the sort of quality you would get on a high-end mobile phone um, and I'm not just talking in terms of K but you know actual quality you know a few years ago this sort of quality in terms of output at least would have impressed people buying big serious looking aircraft it doesn't have to be registered in a lot of places, in, including USA, China, and for a while at least the UK. Um, means that it's light and can get blown about by the wind. Its range in terms of, I mean, the range is generally 500 meters, whatever, because rules are rules. But in practice, you won't want to be put. You won't want to be pushing that with this aircraft. Its radio is only so good. The Mavic Air 2 the middle of the range has 60 frames per second 4k or 30 frames with HDR 4k um, camera it's half inch sensor so it's a little bit bigger um, and affords sort of 48 megapixels uh, in practice those four uh, sorry 48 megapixel images look pretty good it has vision sensors at the front back and to assist with landing. DJI have lovely names for these systems, active track, uh, focus track. It can go almost as fast as the most expensive Mavic, um, over 40 miles an hour, 68 kilometers an hour. It flies really well, it handles nicely. It has the best remote of the bunch, so no worries about video signal dropping out within the distance you'd actually be flying. A bigger battery in there, so this remains charged for longer, so this is a very nice device. You'll notice I'm not talking about the ADS-B technology, which is really exciting as well, because it affords you the ability to be warned about on aircraft nearby. Really, this is just a fantastic drone, great camera, great battery life, you know, best battery life in class, and at 799 US, 769, also not the most expensive Mavic. The Mavic 2, now starting to look a little bit like a less good deal, shall we say. You're going to be spending several hundred more, whichever way you look at it. The cameras on both of these are limited to 30 frames a second. So, yes, you can buy an optical advantage, whether you want that to be a bigger image sensor or whether you want it to be a zoom lens. And those are good reasons to buy a more expensive aircraft. So top of the line? Yeah. To be honest, unless you've got a really good reason for specific features in here, then at the moment the Mavic Air 2 is, is the winner here. Obviously, if you're tempted, it's definitely worth having a little look through the specs and stuff on the, the DJI site. Um, I've put the link in the notes below. Otherwise, just hit subscribe. Um, I'm going to be sharing a lot more of uh, the video from the Mavic Air 2 and from the other aircraft soon. So I'd appreciate a, a subscribe. Thanks for watching.